Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jim Jones, and I'm here today to discuss a little bit on fall protection. Uh, the reason why uh, there is falls, the cause of falls, and, and the different types of fall protection that will be used, as well as fall arrest systems that will prevent us or help us in the case of a fall. So let me start out by addressing what is a fall. A fall is coming down suddenly because of a force of gravity from one level to another or even perhaps the same level. This is why you have to be extremely careful with your footing because there could be loss of footing, loss of a grip, loss of your balance, or you just could be using improper procedures or there could be malfunction in the equipment that can cause a fall. A fall hazard is anything in the workplace that could cause an unintended loss of balance or bodily support and result in a fall. Falls are the leading cause of death in construction. In 2018, out of all 1,008 construction fatalities, 320 were fatal falls. These deaths are preventable. So we need to be extremely careful and observe every piece of equipment before we begin to use it in, in, in terms of climbing ladders, climbing scaffolds, we need to examine any hazards that might present itself before we uh, begin to use any equipment that could be used in a fall. What is fall protection? Fall protection is a method or device that's used to protect workers from falling through or on levels that can cause harm or injury to the worker. Fall protection include guide rails, mid rails, tow rails, uprights. Uh, we could be using barrier, safety nets, Areas where exposure to falls will, or already do, exist include Scaffolds Ladders Roof and roof openings including skylights Open-sided floors and floor openings Structural framing Aerial lift platforms Tops of equipment Permanent and temporary working platforms Leading edge Hoist areas ramps, runways, and walkways, wall openings, stairways, working over dangerous equipment, potential for falling objects, housekeeping concerns. We need to keep in mind that a lot of these injuries could be prevented if fall protection was put in place or fall arrest systems were warring in areas where falls could be uh, created. When the employer is used in fall protection, we always take in the factor of the six foot rule. Anytime we work in six foot above levels, fall protection is required. OSHA protection standards include, as we mentioned before, the safety net system, the guardrail system. You got hole covers. You got canopies that could be used. Uh, warning line systems, and this is used a lot when you, uh, the six foot rule from falling off the surface or getting close to the edge where their harm or danger could come into play. Uh, we also have a safety monitoring system where you monitoring to make sure that uh, these standards are in place. Uh, then we have the personal fall arrest system, such as your, your safety harness. Or, or your lanyard, lanyard, or if you're working in man lifts, or if you're working on a man lift that have uh, the guide rails to it. So all these the employer take in consideration uh, for fall protection. Employers must assess the workplace to determine if walking or working surfaces have the necessary strength and structural integrity to safely support the workers. Uh, alternate options for fall protection include controlling the access zone. You know, you want to make sure that 
uh, individuals that don't belong uh, won't enter a work zone where they can get hurt or protecting the workers that's in that area from getting too close to the leading edge where they can be hurt. Also a warning line system will uh, let us know that we are too close to the leading edge as well as that safety monitoring system where you have a, a safety officer or the competent person making sure that uh, we keep the standards in play, making sure that no one get too close. And also as, as, a, as a rule of protection, we wanna always be mindful that even though we have a competent person taking these measures uh, in their own hands, we wanna as personal workers be mindful also of these safety precautions as well. To prevent employees from being injured from falls, employers must guard every floor hole into which a worker can accidentally walk by use of a railing and tow board or a floor hole cover. Provide a guardrail and tow board around every open-sided platform, floor, or runway that is four feet or higher off the ground or next level. If a worker can fall into or onto dangerous machines or equipment, employers must provide guardrails and tow boards to prevent workers from injury. What is a guardrail system? It's a barrier erected between you and the potential hazard that could be presented. If you lose your balance, slip or fall, the guardrail system is supposed to protect you from falling or protect you from hurting yourself because of the potential fall. The parts of a guardrail system, we have the uprights, the tow boards, we have the top rails, as well as the mid rails. Guardrails, tow boards, mid rails. This is makeshift that we use on the job. Normally, uh, it's made out of two by fours, sometimes four by fours, but uh, in most cases, we use in two by fours. The uprights, the uprights are the vertical members that we use to, to place the guard rail, the mid rail, and the tow board. The guard rail system must withstand 200 pounds, the capacity of weight when you're using the guard rail system. So that top rail should be able to hold at least 200 pounds capacity. If an individual happens to fall or push up against that rail, it should be able to withstand at least 200 pounds of weight. Top rails or equivalent guard rail system members must be 42 inches plus or minus three inches above the walking or working level. They must be capable of withstanding a force of at least 200 pounds of applied pressure. If wire rope is used for top rails, it must be flagged at not more than six foot intervals with high visibility material. Also, the top rail can be used as we alluded to two by four or we can have manila rope or synthetic rope, but it must be suitable and strong enough to withstand or hold the weight of an individual that's working on that scaffold. A mid rail is the rail that goes in the middle. OSHA standard doesn't allow more than 19 inches between each rail. So we wanna make sure from the top rail to the mid rail, that there's not an opening more than 19 inches. Uh, we want to make sure that the mid rail is able to withstand 150 pounds, is capable of withstanding 150 pounds of force when somebody is hitting that mid rail. So the top rail is 200, the mid rail is 150. Mid rails must be capable of withstanding a force of at least 150 pounds applied in any downward or outward direction. Manila, plastic, or synthetic rope used for top rails or mid rails must be inspected as frequently as necessary to ensure its strength and stability. A tow board is the bottom board that we use to prevent tools 
or any access material falling off that can injure a worker or fall onto someone. So we want to make sure that it's no more than a quarter of an inch clearance in a tow board to make sure that we're keeping those that's working below uh, out the way of any harm or injury because of falling debris or falling tools or falling material. When tow boards are used, they must be erected along the edges of the overhead walking or working surface for a distance sufficient to protect workers working below. Tow boards must be capable of withstanding without failure a force of at least 50 pounds applied in any downward or outward direction at any point along the tow board. Tow boards must be at least three and a half inches tall from their top edge to the level of the walking or working surface must have no more than a quarter inch clearance above the walking or working surface, and must be solid or have openings no larger than one inch in its greatest dimension. Where tools, equipment, or materials are piled higher than the top edge of a tow board, paneling or screening must be erected from the walking or working surface or tow board to the top of the guardrail system's top rail or mid rail for a distance sufficient to protect workers below. So we have the upright we talked about. We talked about the top rail, the mid rail, and now we just talked about the tow board. We'll, we'll complete a guardrail system to protect a worker or material from falling. That's the OSHA standard. We want to follow it to, as closely to T as possible. The advantages and disadvantages of guardrails is one that is low cost. Okay, it's also easy installation. Uh, it's also a well-known purpose that you know guys are accustomed to. This is what we uh, is known to work with. This is what we're familiar with. So it's known to the guys that this will protect them. They're more mindful to be cautious and apprehensive to pay attention when we're using these type of systems. It's passive use. You know, it's not difficult. You know, you get a ladder where you're climbing on, a ladder climbing off. Uh, it's also mentioned that if you have to remove any part of a guardrail system, you wanna make sure that you put it back as soon as you finish. Uh, sometimes we have a habit of forgetting or we, we, we trust in that someone else is gonna pick up the slack we want to be mindful that at the end of the day, the guardrail system is back in place the same way that it should be if an individual was on it doing work at that particular time. That was some of the advantages. Let me just give you a few disadvantages. A few of the disadvantages of working with a guardrail system is that sometimes it interferes with the work. You know, you have your guardrail system up and it might be in a place where you need to work Sometimes if we facing uh, uh, apparatuses or trying to get different type of equipment in the way that guardrail system come into play, and then we have to remove pieces of it to get the work done. And as I mentioned previously, we wanna make sure that whichever is removed, try to replace it and put it back in its proper place as soon as you finish, because in the process of work and moving around, we have the potential to forget and, and, and sometime leave it unattended. And this is where accidents can happen. And we don't want this to happen. For more information about fall protection and clarifications on the protections, check out CFR 29, part 1926, subpart M.